Welcome to the Weighted Dips Solution. In this video, I want to talk about how to do dips heavy and safely so that you don't snap your shoulders, wrists, or chest area. So the first thing I need to bring to your attention is your individual anthropometry. You must recognize that it's not about mobility, which dictates proper range of motion on the dip. It has to do with structural factors that are specific for your build. I'm talking everything from arm length, rib cage size, even the weight that your shoulders displace. There's a lot of factors to discuss here, and I'm not going to get into too much detail. Instead, I'm going to refer you to a video created by Daniel from Fitness FAQs. In that segment, he shows you how to perform a little test, which will show you what is the best range of motion for doing dips. If you can get to this range of motion, you're going to be safe doing deep dips. The people that tend to have issues, if they can only extend their shoulder joint to about 30 or 45 degrees before they begin to compensate. So what will happen in these people is they get excessive anterior tilting of their scapula off the rib cage, and this can be really problematic for various structures around the shoulder joint. And I believe that if you do this test and you find out where you lie, you will not experience injuries when you do the exercise because oftentimes, we have this universal idea that it must be this range of motion, must be below parallel, when in fact, that can cause impingement and all kinds of problems if you're not structurally built to do that. You have to understand the way to dip is a high risk, high reward type of movement. And you have to find a way of making it as safe as possible. And if that means decreasing the range of motion to fit your anthropometry, I see this as an excellent idea. So please watch the video created by Daniel. He's a very intelligent man, lots of experience regarding calisthenics. And in fact, I would encourage you to watch a lot of his videos because he has a great channel. So that said, now that you understand what the proper range of motion is for the dip, it's important that you calibrate your hand grip as well. I find a lot of guys, they tend to grab the bars way too wide on the dip, the parallel bars, okay? And for a lot of people that can cause shoulder pain and pec pain. So if you're willing to leave your ego out the door and narrow your grip a little bit, so grabbing the bars closer, obviously you're going to lift less weight, but there's also going to be less internal rotation and stress on the shoulders and pecs. So I would always recommend that you experiment with the grip width and refrain from going ultra wide if it causes you discomfort. Personally, I don't go super wide because it doesn't feel that good. But when I do a close grip, it feels much better. And don't worry, if you do a close grip, you're still going to work your chest to a large extent. The difference now is that your wrists, elbows, and shoulders are in better alignment. So I would highly recommend a closer grip if you get discomfort from dips. In addition, it is strongly recommended that you wear wrist wraps when going very heavy, especially if the parallel bars are very thin. You have to recognize that you are putting a lot of stress on the wrists. And the weighted dip in particular requires immense wrist stabilization. And if you don't have that down, that might cause you to be shaking all over the place. It can cause wrist pain, and it might make the lift feel a bit more painful than you might expect. Do yourself a favor, invest in some wrist wraps, okay? They don't have to be expensive. Wrap around your wrists, and when you go heavy with the parallel bars being the thin ones, in most cases, you will minimize wrist pain as much as possible. It'll give you better stabilization, okay? That's just one piece of advice that I have for recreational lifters. Another thing too is in regards to the pec tendons, right? A lot of guys uh, tear their pecs on dips and they experience uh, sternum pain. Now the sternum pain might have to do with rib cage structure, or it could be that you just have weak tendons and need to strengthen the area. You need to strengthen the connective tissue. And a good thing that you can do for that, you just take a standard band, put it behind your back like this, and then you could do fly motions, okay? And you can do this at home. What I would recommend personally is about four times a week, do like a hundred repetitions very fast. So go here, boom. Get some blood into the muscle, squeeze those pecs, and try to develop the area as much as possible. In addition, you'll want to perform a lot of body weight dips before moving on to weighted dips. I personally recommend that you should be able to do over 20. For me, I only started doing weighted dips when I was able to do 50 in a row. Although, you probably don't need to go that far. But what we tend to see is that a lot of guys who are not conditioned, okay, they're the dudes who get sternum pain when performing dips. So perhaps you should build your base first by strengthening the pecs with a lot of deep range of motion exercises, uh, like the, the band flies. 
even doing things like dumbbell flies and deep dumbbell presses. And of course, high repetition, body weight dips so that you adapt. Okay, now if you still have sternum pain beyond that point, no matter what you do, then I would suspect that it really is a structural issue. And in that case, you should get rid of the dip completely or move on to the next step that I'm gonna demonstrate. So you wanna strengthen the pec area, very, very important. And it's also recommended that you perform a lot of pullovers, all right? Although this may be bro science, I found personally that a lot of guys who do pullovers, they tend to experience less pain during the dips because it tends to strengthen the thorax area. That's what we tend to see according to anecdote. A lot of the old time strongmen were really, really big on pullovers and uh, it allowed them to perform the dips safely. Another thing too, right, the sternum pain, it might have to do with the fact that you are a teenager, right? If you're not a full grown adult, your rib cage will keep getting bigger. I've heard some people claim that it'll grow up to 25. You know, your body, you're gonna get a bit more broad, you know, between 18 and 25. I don't know if that's 100% true, but I do know that if you are a teenager, you're at a higher risk of having sternum pain. So perhaps if you wait at a later age, you won't experience it as much. So that said, I wanna bring you to another solution for guys that are not structurally built to perform dips, or they wanna have some extra protection so they're nice and safe. And that is to use a slingshot when you dip. This, my friends, is the ultimate tool for staying injury-free when performing weight dips because it gives you like a second pair of weaker pecs. This bypasses any shoulder injuries that you might have. It bypasses the risk of getting a pec tear and it even bypasses the rib cage structure issue because now you're getting extra protection right here, which is where most of the damage tends to arise. So if you're a guy who always gets pain when you do dips, try using a slingshot and I'm pretty sure that you're not gonna have any pain. It's a very nice thing. You will feel a lot more stable you're not gonna be as shaky. You're still gonna get an excellent workout. You will feel your pecs, shoulders, and triceps working. The only difference is that there will be less stress on the shoulders, less stress on the pecs, less stress on the sternum if you happen to get pain in that area. Oh yeah, and one final piece of advice too is to possibly include gymnastic ring dips because the gymnastic rings will force you to use correct form on the dips. A lot of guys, when they do straight bar dips or parallel bar dips, they're not having the proper movement pattern down. But when you use rings, it forces you to do things correctly. And actually the rings will teach you to externally rotate at the top. So it's a different movement pattern. And what we tend to see is that guys who get pain on the parallel bars, they don't get the same pain on the rings. So maybe if you stay away from the parallel bars for a little bit, do some ring dips and externally rotate at the top, like you bring your hands out, you know, make sure everything's strengthening the proper way and you learn to retract the scapula and move in a straight line. If you do these things, then it's possible that when you start going back to the standard way of dipping, you're not gonna experience pain because also to understand the rings, we'll build those stabilizers, right? So I think all of these tips combined are gonna be tremendously beneficial. And with that said, folks, I hope you learned something from today's segment. This is the way to dip solution. I provide you the best tips that I can think of in terms of staying injury free. I hope this benefits you. I hope this allows you to perform this old school time-tested exercise. And with that said, I'll talk to all of you next time.